Hi, everyone. Welcome to Grief and Rebirth podcast. I'm your host, Irene Weinberg. And what a pleasure to be introducing you to Susan Allen Medium this evening. Susan and I are now going to have a brief chat so you can get to know her better. And then she'll begin to communicate with as many of your deceased loved ones as time will allow. Susan, hi. Hi. Tell everyone where you're from. Where are you talking to us from? I'm in Los Angeles, everybody. I'm the actual, I'm in the northernmost part of LA city before it becomes another county. So that's where I'm from. Originally New York though. So you're in, you're in Los Angeles and I'm here in West Orange, New Jersey. We're literally across the country from each other. <laughs> I understand your wonderful gift began with animals. How did you discover your ability to communicate with animals, both present and past? And what do you, what, tell us a little bit about what you call animal soul speak. Oh, that's a great question. Thank you, Irene. I started with animals because I always had a thing with animals since I'm a very, very young child. They seem to give me a lot of peace. And my father seemed to know that when, you know, there were, there was fighting in the house or I was upset or I burned my hand, he'd rush me to, you know, uh, there was a, a petting zoo in, in Brooklyn, if any of the if any of you are familiar with um, Coney Island area. And, um, you know, I just immediately was like, for a child, it was like immediate relief for me to be around animals. Um, but I, I, I kind of discovered my gift with animals, like my communication gift. It was purely by accident. I was going through multiple surgeries and I wasn't healing from them. And my brother in his unique wisdom, he is a shrink, so that might help. <laughs> he said to me, do something really, you know, mindless, do some, he, he's really probably the reason why I started doing this professionally because he said, do something mindless to, to, that you're not stressed about because I was selling a house. I was in real estate for 23 years in LA I moved here and I got into real estate. And it was so stressful for me and I was healing from surgeries and I didn't have the help I needed. And he said, do something mindless that you can take your mind off things. And that day it popped up on my computer. It was a teleclass. So I could sit with my computer on my lap while I'm healing with like ice machines on both legs. And um, it was animal communication and it was, you know, affordable. It was really cheap. And she said, grab a book. And this is kind of how I teach. And I'll be doing classes in the next two months that it will be free. So this will be really cool for people. One of my clients paid me so I could teach everybody for free. Anyway, I took this silly like animal communication class. So I thought, oh, this is going to be fun. And, and she just said, here's a picture of my pet. I want you, you know, she put it up on the screen and I want you to journal. Well, what I journaled, I looked at it and I'm, I didn't think I was a good writer, but this was kind of profound to me. Like the writing was so in detail and in depth. And, and at the, at the end, when she went around the room and she said, well, around the, you know, the screen, <laughs> she said, okay, read what you have. And I was, I in depth said, well, your horse said that he had a nose problem. Oh, and he switched to nostril and he said he almost died, but you found him in time. And he talks to the ravens on the water bucket and I was going on and on. And it sounded like something out of a child's Disney movie. And it, she verified that it was accurate that she had taken a class to Bimini to swim with the dolphins. And while she was gone, her horse went into his water bucket, drank water and got a wire caught in one nostril. So he corrected himself. Wow. And when he pulled back, he caused an injury that he almost bled to death. He needed a blood transfusion. So the memory of this horse and this incident and the details that I gave, um, she immediately called me and said, you should join my school. And I said, really? I said, is it accredited? Because I was still a non-believer. Like I wanted to know, well, if I go to this school and I pay X amount of dollars, am I going to get a degree that she goes, well, no, of course not. So I was just really beginning to realize my gift. So my husband kiboshed it and said, you can't leave real estate. People are going to think you're crazy. I'm just looking to protect you. 
And um, the next thing I know, I just did it for free for friends. And it, it was too many people were telling somebody and then a horse trainer wanted me to go to the racetrack and talk to the horse that wasn't winning. And it became like bigger than life. So that's kind of long story long. That's kind of how it started. <laughs> so, so how did your ability move from animals to people? What's your personal soul speak all about? I wasn't looking to talk to dead people and they knew I had a real high anxiety level. So I was like, I really would love that, but I wasn't so certain yet. I wasn't so certain I really wanted to do animals full time. I was doing maybe like 10 or 20 a month and I kept my day job. And what happened was, is I was reading specifically, I was talking to a celebrity's girlfriend and she was talking to me with the cat. She always called me with all their animals. And she, um, besides the, I'll get into the second part of this, which is the baby part of this. And if I forget, just remind me, but she, she was talking to me and I was talking to the cat and I looked across the room and I've read this, that this happens to mediums that just start out across the room. There's a picture of me and my dad. And all of a sudden the photo of my dad part started to look like somebody else. And it wasn't scary. It was kind of cool. And I said, I think your father's here because he's in the picture of me and my dad and I described him. And she said, that's my father. And I said, he said that he left abruptly and that you didn't, he didn't get to say goodbye. And what she told me was he had a heart attack in spin class at five o'clock in the morning, but he was like a really fit guy. So it was very shocking. And he came in and, you know, this is probably nine or 10 years ago. He came in and he gave very clear messages to her. And then I realized how healing this was. So I kind of had a meeting with spirit, you know, in my meditation. And I said, if you don't scare the crap out of me, <laughs> I, I will do this for you. But don't walk through my house and don't scare me because I have anxiety. And they have been just like a team of you know, wonder for me, you know, they just, they, they put a movie in my head and they put feelings in my head and they put situations in my head. And I do hear names and I hear dates and it just depends on the, the, um, the communication with the soul, you know, it just depends, you know, what they, what they would bring through. One of the most recent ones for Christmas that I wrote about, cause it, it was so cool was um, this woman her mom came in and said, um, tell them about the fruitcake. And in my mind, telepathically, she put this fruitcake in my memory of my mother and my grandmother in Brooklyn. At Christmas time, they would get really excited about this fruitcake that they'd mail order. And my little kid brain was like, why would you get a cake in the mail? That's gross, you know? But it was a really good high vibe thing for my mother and grandmother to get this fruitcake in the mail and the woman started laughing and she goes I'm really sorry I'm not laughing at you but my dad just found a, a fruitcake in the freezer downstairs that my mother made and it had to be 30 years old and it still tasted good so <laughs> it's just like it just for us to know that spirit is always around and laughing with us and celebrating with us and they're there when we're crying and they're there so I guess, so we don't feel alone. That's the main thing. Well, is it, you also communicate with spirit about future births, including an unborn child's disposition and gender. That is a really cool ability. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Everyone who's pregnant is gonna to wanna to get in touch with you. Yeah, it's really weird. I mean, Thomas John posted this, that he sent a best friend to me. Um, well, I'll just go back a little bit. I was on the phone with a close uh, woman friend and her daughter was having trouble getting pregnant. There were nine, nine miscarriages, oh, 10 miscarriages. And she kept paying for in vitro and the parents were paying for all this in vitro because they, they had means to do that. And I said, this one's going to stick and it's going to be a girl and she's going to have like an angelic presence and a face and she's always going to be happy. And I don't know why I said it. It just, I blurted it out. It's like a knowing and I said it. And then um, Thomas sent me a friend of his a year ago. I had no idea who his friends are. I just, you know, people come to me, they come from everywhere. And 
I, this woman didn't, I didn't, I didn't know that she had eight miscarriages. Wow. And I said to her, she said, I've miscarried a lot. And I said, I don't care. I just saw you holding a baby in a rose outfit. So that would mean a girl. And I said, you're holding a baby in a rose outfit. And Thomas said that he heard the tape because I don't remember my readings. He heard it himself. He heard the tape that I sent her or that she taped, whatever, and that she's just gave birth to Emily Rose. Oh, so, wow. oh Rose. Oh, wow. Right. They named it Rose. The middle name was Rose. So and then there was one other time I was on the phone with my my own healer when I was getting like my body fixed. And it was about eight years ago. And I had no idea she was trying to get pregnant. And all of a sudden I saw a light in the corner of the room, like, and I felt into it. And I said, you're having a baby. And she like, the smile came across her face. because She was older. She was like in her forties and this huge smile, she was beaming. And of course, you know, we were in a professional, you know, thing. And I, I wasn't a friend of her. She was a healer that I worked with for my own healing. And she just like smiled and she like could barely sit down. And then she didn't say a word. She didn't say a word. And she gave birth to a baby girl. Like oh my. probably like eight months later. And there was one time in particular, this one was a little sadder when I started to realize I had this ability, I was doing my opening meditation. It was like an under two minute meditation and I was doing an animal reading and like, I just don't know what's going to come in. So I don't edit anything because it could be very plausible for you. And it doesn't make any sense to me. And if I'm in my thinking mind, worrying about what's coming out, I mess up my channel. So I have to be just like, know this is happening now and I was doing my meditation and when I got to this woman's lower belly I saw a baby and when I when we finished the under two minute meditation before I opened my readings I said I, I said you have a baby in your belly <laughs> and she said no I don't think so <laughs> and I said oh okay because you know I didn't want to push the issue so the next day she texted me on Facebook, what you saw was real. I took a pregnancy test today. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. I that know. Is amazing. <laughs> that is amazing. So by now, everyone in our audience who has a living <laughs> or lost pet, they have a deceased loved one, or they know someone who is pregnant, they all want to connect with you, Susan. Oh, so that's so <laughs> tell, tell them how can, how, how can everyone who is here connect with you for an individual reading or get on your website or whatever. Give them all the information about you. Okie dokie. So I'm at SusanAllenMedium.com. That's my website. And you'll see a calendar before you book. So you have, um, you can see how far out I am. And I also do Facebook lives. I pop up and I do Facebook lives and I have two levels of readings. I do a 20 minute and I do a 50 minute. Um, and um, Susan Allen Medium is my Facebook page. And I'd love for you to join my newsletter. Occasionally I do pop-ups on my newsletter and I do pop-up readings for my um, my newsletter people. So. so that's great. And now it is time for me to hand the Grief and Rebirth podcast reigns over to you, Susan. <laughs> and Susan is going to communicate with some of your deceased loved ones. When she and Stephanie tell us she's done, I'll have a few closing words. So thank you, everyone. And take it away, Susan. Okay. Um, I don't see chat. Let me. Oh, I see chat now. Okay. Anything more you can share on pre-birth planning? I think that having a baby who's ever asking. Um, I think the pre-birth planning, I'll just let you know, Suzanne, you don't have to pull her up or anything, but um, I think in your mind's eye is see a happy, healthy baby in your mind's eye. That's the greatest plan that you can give and then just turn it over to spirit and um, you know God and our creator to help you with that. Oh, Nicole, congratulations. <laughs> Just what you needed. One of my clients is on. 
<laughs> I think it's a blessing, Nicole. That's so cool. Oh, okay. Uh, hoping to hear from my son and my grandpa. My grandpa's 36th anniversary was yesterday. My son's 30th. Okay. So your son's, that would be Lara Wolf. So your son's. I got her. Uh, okay. You want to pull her up? Sure. Hi, Laura. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Oh, there you are. Hi. Hi, Lara. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm well, thank you. So your um, son's birth <laughs> in heaven is February 1st. Yes, and my grandfather's was yesterday. Well, you know, they're definitely, I just feel them together. Um, mm -hmm. And I do feel like your son is very much still a part of your everyday life. Like, I feel like he gives you messages. Um, yes. And I would feel, um, when I feel into him, I just feel a tremendous amount of love coming towards you. Um <clears throat> May I ask you something with either of them, because they're together, I feel something in my head. Would it be something that would have to do with brain or head or anything in the upper body? But I'm going to, I'm going to stick with skull or head. Would that make sense or brain? How they passed? Yeah. Was it an issue with brain chemistry or brain issues? Uh Yes, chemist for my um, my son. Uh, there's some chemistry mm -hmm. issues with med metabolism. Although I my my camera is is not on because I have a raging migraine right now. That's okay, sweetheart. I'm sending you a okay. um, healing light for that. But I do feel like um, I felt head, so I could be picking up a little bit on you. But um, I'm feeling like he's so much happier now and I feel like you're getting miraculous um like messages from him that you know that he's um in a much more peaceful place because I feel yes. I feel like it was a lot of going back and forth to try to regulate his his head his head he keeps saying my head so um and I yeah I so it was it was 13 years of all of that trying to regulate it yeah I'm so sorry sweetheart but I feel like I feel like you're on the other side of that um I feel like you you know how much peace he has he tells me he gives you messages that you know um does he mess with your electric like did your lights flicker um n no he messes with all of my electronics electronics so yeah but not the lights okay because I felt like it was electrical and he's laughing. He's got a good sense of humor. He says, now that my head doesn't hurt, I'm laughing much more. <laughs> and um, your grandpa is really a very, very loving guy. I feel like he was a huge part of your childhood and your life growing up. I feel like he was kind of like a dad. Like he says, I'm more like, a, I was more like a dad. And he, yes. has, he has your dog. So would you have had a dog that would have passed over and I'm seeing like a brownish or blackish kind of dog. Does this make sense? Would it be his or yours? Um, there's so many dogs um, <laughs> that are crossed. Okay. Um, but I actually have a, a brown cat named dog. Oh, <laughs> is, is your cat named dog on the other side? No, he's actually laying right behind me. Okay. Because I feel like there, there, there was one dog that passed after my son passed, but that was not brown. It could be a German Shepherd or my that grandpa would always pick up uh, stray dogs off of the street and okay, they Can would I have new pets. Question? Just a really quick question. I want to give you a message because they're telling me you're going to travel more. So don't worry about it. Do you like to travel? Uh, yes, funding is a little bit of a problem right now, but I'm actually going to Sedona on Friday. Congratulations, them. they're going to be with you. I, yeah, I know. I need that uh, feeling of the vortex because it, yeah. it feels like that unconditional love, like my near-death experience when my grandmother died. Wow, how beautiful. So, I don't yeah. know if you're writing a book too, but you need to write the book because I heard that. Okay. 
They're telling you, you got to write the book, even though you don't think you're a good writer, just put it in like date order, put it in date order. And you could always hire somebody that could, um, um, edit it. Yeah. Edit it. <laughs> they were giving okay. Because that that's why I haven't written up. I've been getting that message ever since my son passed, but about a book, but it's like, you don't understand. I talk too much and I write too much. Like yeah. it would be a triple trilogy. <laughs> so that's someone okay. does need to edit Someone's it. Else can figure it out. They're telling me that you just write it as it happened, write it as it happened, write it as it happened. They keep saying that over and over like a memoir and let an editor take it apart and make it a three book thing because you're on the precipice of this, but get rid of the self judgment that you talk too much and you write too much. If anything, I talk too much and I'm writing a book. I think you have to get out of that. You know, we're so judgmental. We're also hard on ourselves. It's not where spirit wants us. They want us to be loving and kind to us because this experience walking through life is hard. Just, on a side note, walking through life is hard. Spirit life is ease and grace. And they want you to be nice to yourself while you're here because I do see the three books, three books. Okay. Good. Okay, thank you. Feel better. Thank you. Mm. I, I want to go... I want to go with, um, I feel like, I feel like I have a brother, so I'm just going to put some stuff out there. It's either Samantha or, um, <clears throat> Jean Peretti. I'm just going to uh, go with this. Was one of the brothers military? Was anybody in the military? Can you just send some, I don't know. Can you help me stuff? Who's okay. going to comment they, on that? We can, yeah, let's simply put it in chat if you guys... Yeah, we'll and then we'll see and we can unmute them. Okay. So I feel like I, I maybe I'm with multiple people, but I feel like um there's somebody, there's a gentleman here. I feel I feel like he would have been military or he would have worn a uniform. I do feel was a I feel like mm -hmm. okay. is there a brother that was military? Is there a brother that was military? I'm looking at chat. Is there a brother that was military? Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm okay. in here. Oh, my Talk brother, Laura, well, she was just, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think it's Jean. Jean? I think it's Jean. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Jean. Really okay. Thanks for uh, coming through with that. Yeah, let me find her. All right, Jean, I'm gonna unmute you. Jean, let me ask you, were you close in age? Because you're showing me really close in age. Was I like close? He was my twin brother. Okay, because he showed me, were you a minute apart? Jean, were you like a few a minute apart? Uh, four minutes. Four minutes? Okay, I'm having trouble hearing you. So maybe get off video. So you're not so stilted with the uh mm -hmm. we were four minutes apart okay he's telling me he walks with you when you go out to walk um do you feel him around you he's telling me he always is with you he tells me like he's in like as close as <laughs> right next to you um I feel like he would I have do. been. Hi, Jean, I see you now. But I'm thinking you have to get off video because if not, I'm not going to be able to read you. Because you're um you're freezing. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just give her another. Okay, good. Now talk and put your volume up so I can hear you. I feel as if, are you getting out walking? Because he's telling me when you go How walk. How do I do that? <laughs> okay. Thank you. Because he says he's pushing you to walk further. <laughs> so um, he says, get her to walk more. It's good for you. Um, and he, 
Do you get cold a lot? Do you get cold a lot? Jean? Do you get cold a lot? It is. I see her. Yeah, but I can't hear her. She's getting. I didn't. Oh, she's like freezing up. Yeah, Jean, she's freezing. Why don't we go to someone else? Jean, do you want to yeah. try to come in and out? We'll we'll re come back to you. Yeah, it's all the time. Yeah. All the time. Oh, hot and freeze flashes. Okay. Because he's telling me she's always cold. And I feel like when he I'm yeah. just gonna tell you the message. When he when you get cold, he yeah. his soul is with you. I'm always cold. Yeah, and he says his soul, when she's cold, that's me. He kind of makes you laugh. He's kind of making me laugh. And I feel like he's pushing you to do more. You've got to get out more. He goes, get in the sunlight. Get in the sun whenever you can. Use the sunlight to make yourself feel better. I think you'll be a lot, lot less depressed. <laughs> Okay, um, I feel I'm gonna, does your brother have a son? You know, it's such a shame because we've got a good connection with her brother. Okay, I'm gonna just go with the next one. Um, okay. Oh. Mm. I'm gonna go with Patty. I wanna, I wanna, I think I have, Patty, um, Patty, and her name is Patty Cobb. Hey, Patty. Patty Cobb. There? Hi. There she is. Hello. Hi. Where are you? I'm, I'm right here. <laughs> oh, hi, Patty. Hi, Susan. Um, I feel like with your husband. Um, I'm very depressed. Okay, somebody's maybe not muted. Is everybody muted except Patty? Okay. Um, Patty, can you hear me? I can, yes. Ah, oh, beautiful. You're with your husband. Um, she's, he's giving, he's talking a lot, <laughs> trying to get him. Would he have been a very hard worker? Would he have yes. been a very hard worker? He's showing me very, very hard worker. Would he have, would he have not gotten to retire? Like, was he? Yes, he was, he was not retired. Yeah, that's what he said. He goes, I just worked and worked and worked. He calls that's you crazy. his queen. He says, she's my queen. <laughs> I'm actually a queen of harmony in a singing organization. <gasps> oh, thanks for that. I think he's um, always around you. He says, um, he says, you're always, you're always his heart. Like I feel like your heart is tethered to his. And I also feel like, I almost feel like either you didn't get to do the big trip, you were gonna do a big trip. And he's telling me he still wants you to do it. Like it's coming up for you. Like he really wants you to do it. And I think you'll be able to do that. Like, I know that 2021 is probably not gonna be a year many people are gonna travel much unless it's way late in the year. But I do feel like 2022, you've got to do this trip because he says he's going to be with you on it. And he also has the dog in spirit or a cat he's got. And he said that he, he still like ha is so affectionate with this animal. <laughs> so I feel like he, at first, I feel like he may not have wanted this pet, but I feel like it was his baby. And I almost feel like he would have overfed it or something. <laughs> I think that's the dog we have now. I, he had, the dog hasn't passed yet, but that oh, was okay. his baby. The it was first, his it baby. Was the first dog he ever had. And he just, it was his baby. It was his total baby. He yeah. said that he would ask you all the time, did you feed the dog? Did you feed the dog? Did you feed the dog? And that's what he's saying. Yeah, yeah. And one time he fed it too much ham <laughs> and the dog got a little sick <laughs> oh my god that is so adorable well i just 
Um, uh, I have to say that he's, um, because I don't, I don't know if you've had a mediumship reading before, but he is telling you and he's been trying to tell you, you know, that he does want you to move on. He keeps telling me. Yeah. Hard. I know. Hard. I know. But he says, force yourself. What does move on mean? <laughs> no, he's like, he wants you to, um, you know, get out there. Just. You know, he wants you to live. You're here. He's there, but he's like right here. Like he's right next to you. <laughs> and oh. I almost feel like he was a cuddler. Like he would sit really close to you. He was very oh, affectionate. Very touchy. Very much very touchy, so. Very loving, very touchy, feely. And he's I still that so much. That. <laughs> Yeah. You didn't like that or you loved it? No, I said, I miss it very, very much. I didn't uh, like it in the beginning. I gave him trouble in the beginning with it. I was like, no public displays of affection. But then I learned to love it very, very much. <laughs> yeah. And that's what he's kind of, he says, I'm still doing it because I'm still right next to you. And he just like leans into you like this. And then he leans back and he keeps doing that. Um, very, very nice man. And oh, um, I feel like he was close to his dad. Would he Very. have been close? Because I feel like they're together. Are yeah. They, he, yeah. yeah. Um, I feel like they're together and he's and he's um, thrilled that he got to be with his dad again. And I feel like they're enjoying baseball again together and they're just having a grand old time. Oh, that's so great. Yeah, and he's, um, he's popping champagne for you, so. He, he's popping a champagne bottle. We had special him. champagne, yes. You love special champagne? He and his dad, too. Well, they showed me champagne, so um, I, I feel like, it. I feel like, you know, COVID is a very strange time. It's a time of, you know, a lot of us are feeling a lot of grief, you know, at this time because there's, you know, you can't socialize. So you really stuck with, you know, deciding. So I always tell my clients, decide what you want in the next 10. And they go, 10 what? And I go, 10 years. Because what you're, what you're thinking about today creates 10 years down the road, if not more. So he really wants you to decide, you know, on the place and the trip and what's next for you. Because he's guiding you. He's, you know, he's moving you along. I am stubborn and he, he, he always needed to help me. <laughs> I don't think you're going to be that stubborn though. I think you're going to, you're going to start seeing things and meeting people that are going to make you really happy. And he just laughed and winked. He goes, not too happy. <laughs> that is so funny. <laughs> anyway, he was a very funny man. Yeah. He's funny. And he's just making a joke. He goes, I'm just teasing you. He goes, I want you to have everything. And um, I would say, what, what trip is this? Were you planning on a trip with him? Well, we used to, we had a timeshare in Cabo and we loved going there together. And we didn't get to go um, the, the last year. And then of course I didn't get to go this past year. Yeah. So I'm thinking he's talking about Cabo because I have it scheduled for May and, and I'm hoping I can go. I don't, you know, I don't know. I think you should. I think you should go. With his sisters. I take his sisters with me. Oh, how fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's going to be there with you. Did he like to dance? Well, Did he get on the dance floor and like be funny. We <laughs> had a, um, there's a special picture of us dancing together. It was actually on a stage with, in front of a bunch of people. And it's like well known amongst all of our friends, the two of us dancing together. Um, he was not what you would call it a, a, a great dancer, but we did that together. And it, it, um, it was a really fun, a fun night. And you have that picture because he's talking about that time. I, I do. And he's kind of like making, he's making a joke. So I kind of knew he was like doing something funny on the dance floor. Yeah. And he was uh, laughing too. <laughs> he was definitely laughing about 
that because we had we had done this dance together and uh, we had practiced it really hard. I don't know if you can see it. There's oh yeah, it. that's amazing. And uh, we had practiced it really hard together. And when we got up there to dance it, neither of us could remember the steps. So we just started swaying and then doing the, that little thing there together. And yeah, that's probably what he's talking about. That's beautiful. Yeah, it was a great Maybe, dance. Just one last thing. Who was the baker? Who would have been the baker? That's his last name. Oh my God. I love that. Thank you. Chills. What a validation. Yes. Because I said baker and then I thought, you're not baking. <laughs> he said, just <laughs> say it. Thank you, Susan. Beautiful. Thank you Thank so you much. Thank you so much. Oh. I appreciate you. Somebody just said Cabo was the best. Club Casadas, make his sisters your winning people. <laughs> I'm just feeling into who I feel drawn to. Oh. Um. Huh. I feel like there's a lot of unfinished business. I'm gonna bring up. I'm. I'm. I might do both people. I want to see who comes in stronger. Um. Let me talk to Morgan. My brother killed in an accident. Morgan. Okay. Let me unmute. Sorry. Hi, Morgan. Can you hear us? Yes. Thank you. Hi. How are you? Okay. Thank you. And you? Yeah. Um, so you guys were really close, huh? Yes. Yeah. You know, he's around you. I feel like he's really close to you right now. Um, and I feel like he wanted you to know that I feel like it was very sudden. Like it came out of nowhere. And yeah. he wants you to know that, um, he wants you to continue, you know, doing life. I feel like you get stuck, like moving forward because of the grief. And I feel like he wants you to, don't forget who you are. Cause he said you worked really hard at who you are. And he wants you to remember um, that you have special, special abilities, special things that you got to keep moving forward and using the tools you need. Um, and something about like breathing, when they found him, was he still, was he still there? Was he just breathing like barely? No. He was dead on impact? Okay. Because I, Who is in spirit that would have trouble breathing? Does anybody in spirit that would have had asthma or trouble breathing? Because I feel there's somebody else coming in for you. My mother. Okay, thank you. And my mother-in-law. I'm gonna go with your mom. I do feel, um, I feel, would she have, would she have gone after your brother or did your brother go after her? Cause I'm feeling like she had her own grief in life. I'm feeling like she's telling me she had her own grief in life, her own grief to get through. Would that make sense? Yes. Um, yes. He got killed before she passed. Yeah. I don't think she could have stayed on the planet. I think that was part of it. And I think it exponentially, um, and it's not that she didn't love all her children, but the loss of a child, you know, some people can bear it. You know, some people can make lemons out of lemonade. It's a poor analogy, but some people become medium. Some people can write about it. Some people can talk about it, but the loss was just, it just took the wind out of her. Cause I it felt a lot of 
loss of air for her. She so was never the same. She was never the same. And that's what I feel like she's finally at peace. Like she's communicating with me very telepathically, but very gently. Like the, the I feel very, very uh, quiet um, energy with her. Like she's finally with him and at peace. And, um, but she's around you too. She says, I loved her. Was it just the two of you, sweetheart? No, I, ha I have um, two other brothers and a twin sister and another okay. um, half sister. But I feel like I feel like you're the one. You are the one that is seeking more spiritual um, help than than your siblings. Because I feel like it's you, him, and her. Like your mother's focused on you. Like I feel like your mother is around you. So I think out of everyone in your family, all the siblings, I feel like you're the one that's really like um, going to spirit more, or you would be, um, how's, what am I trying to say? Or do you have a birthday coming up or? No. You don't? In July. Who has a birthday? Is it your husband? No. Um... Your mother's bringing in a birthday cake for somebody. Well, Todd, my brother, had a birthday. His birthday was in March. Oh, he was in March? Mm hmm mm. That's, that's possibly. Well, I just feel like she's very happy where she is, and she's, um, do you have any questions? Um, yes, I have a question that I used to be able to channel sporadically and now I can't do it at all that's okay you need to meditate in the morning more I feel like when you get up in the morning sit in meditation for 10 to 15 minutes and I feel like you'll be able to start doing it again are you meditating every morning no would you start your meditation practice again yes yeah I think you'll be I think you'll be able to do it more. Thank you so much. I'm so sorry for your loss, but he's very much around you. So is your mom. Thank you. you you're an answer to my prayers. You're welcome, Morgan. God bless you. Thank you. Same to you. You're welcome. I'm going to go with Roseanne. Oh. oh, no, she didn't need me right now. Hold on. I was going to say there's two, so wait. No, I know. Wait, don't, don't. Let me just feel into this a little bit. Thanks, Steph. You're amazing. <laughs> I try. Okay. I'm going to go with Mary. I'm going to go with Mary and her mom, Mary Aralanas. Mary Aralanas. Let me see what I can bring in for you, sweetheart. Okay. I'm asking you to unmute. Mary? Yes. Hi. Hi, Mary. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Um, so your mom, I'm so sorry for your loss. Um, I feel like your mom, um, she's talking about two boys. So who has two boys? Who has two boys? We we don't have much boys in our family. Any <laughs> girls? Um, uh, is there is is there boys on the other side or her brothers on the other side? My brother. Your brothers on the other side was her. Yeah. Okay, and I also feel like would you have known your mother to have had a miscarriage in her life? Um, I'm not sure. Because she's talking about two boys and I feel like she's with the boys. I feel like she, she, um, I feel like her brother meant a lot to her in life. And I feel as if her brother went before her and it was, it was. Ellie, her brother, Ellie. Mm -hmm. She missed him. She really missed him. Yeah, I feel like he meant a lot to her, but she didn't complain about it. Like, I don't feel like this woman complained about much. 
in life, like she didn't complain about grief or being sad or she like, for lack of a better word, she sucked it up and marched on, you know, very strong, very strong. And I feel like, you know, she didn't really share. She loved her kids. So she, she didn't share like the grief that she would have in her own heart for the loss of her brother. And she talked about the two boys. I'm, I'm just trying to figure out who the second boy is, but she taught, I wonder if she had a miscarriage, but she has the boy and your brother. So I feel like they're together. Um, and then she talks about, I feel like she would have a religious practice. Like, would she be with like rosaries or was she lighting candles? She would do that. Yeah, because she's still doing that, but she does it for you. She said, this is my daughter. She says, this is my daughter. Um, and I feel like you would have taken care of her or helped her in the end in some way. She lived with me and it was between myself and my sister, Pat. Okay. And she says that, um, she says, she's sorry she got on your nerves. <laughs> she got on your nerves. <laughs> no, it wasn't that. I'm a nurse, so I have a lot of patients, but she thought we always, like, she was a burden. No, but she loves you. She's laughing now. She knows she wasn't. But <laughs> what's with her with the post office? Did she always have you go to the post office, or did she like the going to the post office? Something with the post office. I don't know what she's trying to tell me. Huh. Does it make sense at all? Um. That probably would be more with my sister, Pat, always doing the errands with her or sending packages. Okay, because who would be sending the packages? Your sister? Would she send your sister to the post office to send things? Yeah, my sister did everything. Oh, okay, because she's saying I drove, I drove them crazy. <laughs> and But she's also saying she loved TV. Did she sit yes, in front of the did. TV a lot? Like, I feel like she would have loved TV. She says, I still watch TV. Oh. <laughs> and she wanted you to know her legs feel better. She goes, my legs oh, are better. God, thank God. So what yes. was going on with her legs? Why are her legs sore? That was from uh, having Waldenstrom, a uh, blood cancer. And she received some kind of treatment, but the side effects were getting a lot of uh, pain in her legs. Yeah. She didn't yeah. like that. So no, she didn't. Really not fun. It was hard. Yeah. So she says, my legs are great. She says, I feel good <laughs> in my legs. Um, and um, is there a wedding coming up in the family? A wedding? Yes, my daughter. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you on the 21st. Oh, wow. <laughs> she says it's going to be a long and happy marriage. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's you see two, possibly three um, kids. <gasps> wow. Yeah, it's two, definitely see two. There could be a third. I don't know yet. <laughs> Wow. Okay. That's good. Cause I want to be, I want more grandchildren. <laughs> Do you have any questions? Um, I just want to know if my chihuahua is with my mother. She just brought him behind her back. She just went like this. Be, um, she's behind her back? Yeah. She had him behind her back and she said, look, and she's smiling. And I feel like, um, that dog is smart. That's not like a normal dog. Oh no, she was really smart. <laughs> she reminds me of one of my dogs that crossed, but really, really smart, like human smart. Like um, she talked without, you know, talking. She would let us know what she wanted. But everybody was in tune with the dog. It was like you all had like a sixth sense with the dog. Well, she was our baby. She was. We had her since a puppy. Yeah, that's kind of what she's talking about. Like, she's like, this, this kind of really was your baby, really. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but she's got the dog and. Um, that, that's what I was hoping. And um, she takes care of the dog. And I feel like um, she's cooking for the dog. Did you used to cook for the dog? <laughs> yes. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes. She was very spoiled. <laughs> yeah, because they're cook they're still over there cooking for your dog. So <laughs> Oh, that's good. I gotta tell my husband. <laughs> yeah, but they got the dog and the dog's running in circles right now. She's she's um really cute. I never get animal sexes right in spirit, believe it or not. So I just don't, but they're all together. Oh good. That makes me feel better. That that was that's what I needed to know. And just one last thing. Did you rescue that dog? Or was there a first home for that dog and then you came to your home? Um, no, we, we, she was a, a like four, four weeks old in front of a Walmart in um, Phoenix. And they were selling her and we said, we'll take her. So it was like a rescue, right? It was like a rescue. It seems like a rescue because that doesn't sound like standard breeding breeders practice um, in front of a Walmart. Um, it was something that we were going to give her a good life. Because yeah. she was not going to have a good life without you. So she's saying thank you for taking her. Oh, good. Yeah, that's the message. I should have just gotten to that right away. All right. Oh, wow. Thank you so much. So welcome. Oh. Hmm. Susan, this will probably be your last one. We'll have to wrap it up if okay. you want to just do this one more. I'm going to go with Charlima. Her, um, with her husband. I'm going to go with Charlima. Is that with an S? Oh, I see her. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Unmuting. Hello. Hi. Where are you? Let me find you. Hmm. Can you wave? Oh, there you are. Hi, sweetheart. Hi. So your husband is on the other side. He's in heaven. Yeah. Okay. Um, there is a connection with him was um can i ask you a question um did he work with his hands did he work with his hands in life um not not career wise or anything but you know not not like with a job no but did he like doing things with his hands like did he create things or build things on his days off uh not really but okay. I mean, he's always doing stuff, but okay, not. Let me ask you a question. He's, I feel like, um, I feel like definitely he's around you and you're, you're saying you feel him around you. You feel still the connection. Yeah. You're, he's definitely connected to you because I don't think that this was your first go around together. I think that you've had many lifetimes together and it's kind of like you used to talk about knowing that. Would that have been something you spoke about? Me, yes, but he did not believe that. Okay. He says she was right. Hold on. Because I feel like you were, um, I feel like you were, you know, you were, two, you know, two peas in a pod um, together. And I feel as if um, he's definitely around you. I feel like he would tell me to tell you to, you got to move on. Because I, I feel like the energy is still like a little bit stuck, the grief energy. And he wants you to have a life because that's why we're here. We're here to live. And I feel like if you think sad thoughts, like you think you'd rather be with him than here, it's not going to serve you. It's not going to serve you. He wants you to think of the happy memories that you had together, the fun, the joy, the, um, he wants you to focus on that and not focus on the grief. Because I feel like if you can focus on the joy and the fun that you had together, um, you'll keep your energy higher. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So try that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. God bless you. You too. I think, I think we're done. Yeah. I had so much fun. This is <laughs> wonderful. And I am sure tell everyone once again, Susan, how they can get a hold of you for private readings. Um, my website is susanallenmedium.com and it's A-L-L-E-N, susanallenmedium.com. And I do, um, if you join my newsletter, I have events coming up. I have an event January 18th with Thomas John. Um, and then I have an event coming up in February with Kimberly Meredith. Um, and I also do pop-up lives on Facebook just like this. And I do um, some pop-up lives for my newsletter. Just depends on the day. <laughs> um, 
Susan, really quick, you were saying how you were going to do those complimentary um, animal readings coming up. Do you have dates or you just want people to sign up for your newsletter? That's just what I need help with. I have two, uh, I'm doing animal soul speak classes. And oh, I forgot to answer your question. Soul speak is just another way of me saying I'm talking to the soul of your pet or deceased loved ones living or deceased. I'm going to be doing two animal soul speak classes two in a row like one month apart and they'll be free and they were donated by a client who is an amazing humanitarian andrea yeager and um she donated that so it's just up to me to get it out there and, and do it <laughs> this is great and also everyone needs to know this is also being videotaped so you can go back if you need to if you want to revisit it and this is so great, Susan, because now everyone has been introduced to your wonderful gift. And uh, I, I really think many people here will be contacting you um, because they're sad that they couldn't get their message today, but they can get it from you another time. And here's a loving reminder, everyone, that you can see all of the interesting and insights-filled Grief and Rebirth podcast episodes on irenweinberg.com. And make sure to follow us and like us on social at Irene S. Weinberg on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. As I always like to say, to be continued. Many blessings. Thanks again, Susan Allen Medium. And bye for now.